to Karen Oresten. She's from the Friends of the Earth United States, and she's going to give us an overview of uh, the discussion here in the conference. Karen. Okay. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to try to give an overview, but we have to first acknowledge that everything at this moment is, is very unclear. And um, nobody actually really knows what's going on. There are many meetings behind closed doors, and there's lots of speculation. So that has to be a preface for, for everything that's discussed here. But I'm going to outline the dynamics a bit for you of what we see uh, going on. So uh, there's discussions now among uh, AOSIS, LDCs, and the EU um, for some sort of deal for something under the KP and something else that's legally binding outside of the KP. And we don't know what it is. Um, and even if it appears now to sound progressive, the devil is in the details. So it's absolutely fundamental to know what is the content of what's being discussed. And at Durban thus far, uh, developed countries have not proposed or supported anything that gets us anywhere near where we need to be. Um, to keep the world from frying, basically. Um, we need reductions in line with science and with justice. Um, form must follow function. The KP cannot be an empty shell left to wither and die with only false solutions like carbon markets living on. Um, we must stick to what we agreed to under the Bali Roadmap, which covers 100% of the world's emissions. We can't keep shifting the goalposts, and that's what's being done here. Um, the United States and Canada are absolutely unconstructive in these, in these uh, talks. And as someone from the United States, my perspective is that the U.S. wants to bring the paralysis of U.S. politics into Durban. And that's their goal. Um, they're blocking at every turn. They're blocking on finance. They're blocking on mitigation. There's nothing positive coming from the United States in these talks. Um, India and China and other developing countries, they've made repeated concessions in Copenhagen, in Cancun, and in return, they've gotten empty promises from developed countries. Indeed, developing countries are actually doing more in terms of mitigation than developed countries. And that's according to a number of scientific studies. Um, as far as finance, the Green Climate Fund must not be an empty shell. And it must not privilege the international private sector. There must be no private sector facility. The private sector must not have direct access to the Green Climate Fund. Um, and the Jeff is not supposed to be the secretariat. That's a discussion right now. Developed countries are insisting that the Jeff be the secretariat. The, the secretariat is supposed to be independent. The Jeff is not independent. They already have the World Bank as the interim trustee. Now they want to add the Jeff. That's unacceptable. And and I just want to give an example of what could happen with the private sector facility as is. The United States could export credit agency could give a loan guarantee to ExxonMobil to do a project in a developing country, and the U.S. will count that as its contribution to climate finance. That is possible right now. Um, just one or two more points. Um, finance must not be used as a bribe to get developing countries to agree to a very bad mitigation deal. Um, Finance is a moral and legal obligation in and of itself. And I'd just like to end by saying that the blame for the dysfunction of what we've seen in Durban lies squarely on the shoulders of developed countries, most especially the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Karen.